cell receptor is part of adaptive immunity so it is part of adaptive immunity we know that T cells are getting its name because it is getting matured in the thymus once it is maturing in the thymus it will be put into the circulation they will come to lymphoid cells it will be constantly circulating and the T lymphocytes are capable of identifying antigens that are processed protein antigens and that are also expressed on self molecules with the help of or se cells with the help of MHC molecules therefore we can say that there is MHC restriction T cells are MHC restricted unless they are in combination or they are expressed with the help of MHC molecules T cells cannot respond at all let us look at the structure of a T cell receptor if you uh, T cell receptors again they are looking very similar to the antibody structure uh, there are two four kinds of polypeptide chains are found in T cells receptor alpha beta gamma and delta two of these join together to form a kind of a heterodimer one possibility is alpha beta T cells T alpha beta cells that forms about 95 percentage of the T cells which are circulating if the second kind is gamma delta so we call it T gamma delta that is about 5 percentage you see how the distribution of the T cells happens on and how we have divided them based on the kind of uh, uh, in the structure or the composition of the receptor or the polypeptide chains which are present on its surface let us draw the structure for example let us draw the structure of the alpha beta chain in the alpha beta chain in the alpha chain will have two domains similar to the antibody structure then assume this is a T cell it is on its surface so it has a short transmembrane region somewhere around 20 to 21 amino acid that will be the length of the transmembrane region then it has a very short uh, cytoplasmic tail so this is going to be the N terminus this is the C terminus a very short cytoplasmic tail that is only about 3 amino acids long this is called the alpha chain alpha chain has about 248 amino acid if the molecular weight is about 40 kilo dalton is the molecular weight in the beta chain okay this will have disulfide bonds present there so that the domain structure is formed in the beta chain of the T cell receptor similar to this a transmembrane region and a very very short cytoplasmic tail only of about three amino acid this also has disulfide bonds if the, if the total number of amino acid is 282 the molecular weight is roughly about 43 kilo dalton is the molecular weight so this is the basic structure of the alpha beta dimer heterodimer of the T cell receptor which is composing of about 95% of the T cells will have this kind of a receptor so similar structure will be present even in the case of uh, uh, gamma delta receptors also now this has a very similar structure to the uh, immunoglobulin structure so this is called in the variable alpha this is a very beta this is the constant region of the alpha this is the constant region of the beta look at the kind of similarity it has it shares with the immunoglobulin so the all these even the all these forms part of in the immunoglobulin super family gene now 
as we have seen in the case of uh, uh, B cell uh, the receptors we have we know that this short cytoplasmic tail is not capable of communicating the signal about the kind of uh, peptide it has bound to in the, in the main function of the receptor bind becomes it is only binding which means for signaling purpose we need another set of complex and in the set of proteins that are associated with the signaling is called CD3 CD3 stands for cluster of differentiation the CD3 has four different proteins they are or polypeptide chains they are called gamma delta epsilon and seed so these are the four different polypeptide chains gamma delta epsilon and zeta chain gamma epsilon forms one heterodimer and delta epsilon forms another heterodimer and in the zeta chain that uh, two zeta chains will join together and forms a third heterodimer okay zeta written like this okay it forms another heterodimer how do we arrange the structure for example let us arrange the structure of the gamma delta uh, that is looking similar to it will have a similar domains like the immunoglobulin domain one domain a transmembrane region and then there is a long cytoplasmic tail because the function is going to be signaling so this let us call it the gamma then there is a delta another long cytoplasmic tail so this is the delta region that forms one complex and they will be connected by disulfide linkages their disulfide linkages will be connecting them so it stays as a complex similarly two zeta uh, chains it forms another uh, another polypeptide chain here this is one zeta and the second zeta what is important about the zeta chain is it has a very very short uh, uh, extracellular portion only about nine amino acid very short one only nine amino acids a transmembrane region and then it has a long very long cytoplasmic region now on this cytoplasmic region there are very specific sites observed and these sites are known as a r a m there are three sites here also there are three sites here a r a m stands for antigen recognition activation motif antigen recognition activation motif therefore when an antigen uh, when the t cell receptor is recognizing an epitope with the help of mhc molecules these molecules these receptors are uh, these associated receptors are responsible for signaling similarly there are going to be aram molecules even on the uh, gamma and the delta chain also so these sequences are responsible for sending the signal to the nucleus of the t cell and in the nucleus of the t cells rearrangement of the gene occurs in response to the nature of the antigenic determinant and the corresponding T cell response will be made. It may be in the form of T cytotoxic cells or in the, in the, or in the form of effector cells. So such a response is made only after this signal is sent by this particular complex. Several research has been carried out in order to understand this complex. What is important to know is these receptors are expressed, uh, they can be studied only in response to a particular antigen. 
then only it will be expressed. So, only with the development of monoclonal antibody, the structure of these T cell receptors were elucidated. That is only after 1980s. Um, then it is also observed that if one of these polypeptide chain is missing, the whole complex is not expressed. It is not functional. It is so essential that the entire complex has to be there for an effective T-cell response.